Hey, Shoujo fans! Welcome to episode 14 of Shoujo Sunday. This week, we are going to be discussing episodes 4 through 6 of Kagaki Shoujo. Let's dig in. Okay, so right off the bat, before we dive in, I just want to very quickly give a trigger warning. The show is definitely heavier than I expected it to be, going in blind. I didn't know all of this was going to be part of it, but we are dealing with, when mentioning the last episode, sexual assault and violence, and we're going to be discussing a lot this week about eating disorders as well as harassment. So if that's that's not something you're comfortable with. I'm not sure if this episode will be for you. I could very selfishly suggest you listen to episode 10 of Shoujo Sunday because I'm very proud of, <laughs> of my little Yukimura fanfic. Yes. If you need a laugh instead, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. But otherwise, we're going to kick it off here with discussing four to six of Kagaki Shoujo. So last week, we left off after learning about Ai's troublesome past with her mother's boyfriend sexually assaulting her when she was younger and giving her this hatred for men today. The episode ends with her stalker, who was the reason why she was kicked out of JPX, because she called him a creep at a meet and greet. He was showing up at Koka trying to talk to her, and she ran away, leaving Sarasa with him alone. So episode 14, Tears Overwritten, our soft serve summary. We pick up right where we left off. After Aya runs away from her stalker and Sarasa, we hear the stalker tearfully say he wanted to apologize to Ai. Sarasa and the stalker sit to talk, and they're spotted by one of the second-year girls. We learn that this stalker man was a neat when he discovered JPX, and of course, Ai. Her attitude inspired him to finally get out of the house, and he ended up making friends and getting a job. He was so excited to meet Ai and grabbed her hands too long to explain express his love for her at a meet and greet. In the present day, Ai goes to make sure Sarasa is okay, having felt bad that she left her behind with the stalker. When Ai finds them, they're dancing and goofing off together, which upsets Ai. Sarasa and Ai end up having a fight where Sarasa says Ai should have been relieved to see her safe with the stalker instead of so angry, if Ai's worry had actually been about her safety. Ai is angry, and Sarasa says that they're through, but Ai retorts that they were never friends to begin with. Also, in choir class, we learn that Ayako, who was body shamed in tap class in the last episode, claims to be on a diet now. The next day, Ai is nowhere to be found at school. Sarasa and her uncle Taichi look for her and find her while she's being harassed by two men who recognized her. Her stalker attempts to come to her rescue, but is unable to fight at all. Taichi and Sarasa show up and Sarasa loudly screams that they're being harassed, and two cops come chase those two men away. Sarasa tells Ai how the stalker helped find her, and that he cares about her. Ai ends up giving him a handkerchief to wipe his bloody nose and tearfully thanks him for the help. The last frame of the episode shows Ayaka's face just after she's thrown up in a dark bathroom with no one around to see her. And that is our soft serve summary of episode four. Getting into themes, do you have any theme ideas, Chica? <laughs> the way I put, I put girl, I guess. Girl, I guess. <laughs> girl, I guess. Because I could not believe that we had an episode where they were trying to redeem her stalker. I know. So I just oh. I smooth away. I said, girl, I guess. And then the second thing I sort of came up with, which I guess is a more legit theme, is that there's more to people than what meets the eye. Okay. But I stand with girl, I guess. <laughs> girl, I really like girl, I guess. Because mine should honestly have a question mark at the end because 
it's just feeding into this like stalker apologist thing and I'm not saying <laughs> I am in no way here for that. So I just put sometimes people show they care in funny ways. I hate that, but that seemed to be the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. I know. <laughs> Do you have any sprinkles on top? I think I have one sprinkle on top, and that is for episode five. I don't think I have any sprinkles on top this week, so it's okay. Yeah, and um, for this episode, guys, just know the hot fudge is hot as shit. Oh, so. boy. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. All right, but before we dive into that, let's get into Floats Your Boat. So I'm just going to be me and kick it off real quick. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like a lot of my floats your boat this week are just quotes people said. So this is one from Sarasa regarding I. She's like, if she would just stand center stage, she would shine like a supernova. And I say, <clears throat> gay. <laughs> gay. The gay is gay. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of that. It's like, I'm sorry, but I'm also not. I just, it's a really funny, like, inside joke with myself at this point. <laughs> I finally, Gianna, for real, I finally started seeing, I started seeing the lesbian vibes. You started seeing it this week? Yes. I finally got it. I was like, yes. Okay. <laughs> it's there. Especially the last one. Yes. Episode six. It is very there. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> I guess another quick floats your boat would be that I realizes that she shouldn't have run away and left Sarasa alone with her stalker and goes to make sure she's okay. That's for sure the right thing to do. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> I would think I put that in banana split, but I said she ran away and she left Sarasa with her stalker. But I appreciate the fact that she came back. Yes. It's just <laughs> It was just a lot. It was a roundabout way. There was time, guys, okay? It wasn't like, oh, it wasn't quick. <laughs> yeah. Her coming back. But I appreciate that she came back. Yeah. I think my next floats your boat is like later in the episode. I only have like two more floats your boat. So I don't know if you have anything in the middle you want to share. Okay. So floats your boat. What else did I have on here? <sighs> It's like momentary, like, guys, you know, I try to compartmentalize these scenes. So when the stalker talked about feeling bad that she lost her career, I thought it was gratifying that he at least felt bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's just like, <laughs> I, there's like so little to say because it's like, he stalked her. Like, <laughs> he stalked, he, stalked, like, he oh literally God. stalked her. <laughs> and then he did it again. Oh, I, anyway. Right. And it's some, oh, uh, yes. Anyway, we're in close your boat. Um, <laughs> Trying. Like, let's see the uh, Kabuki man. So the Kabuki man, I call him that. That is Sara says, well, no, I think that's later on in that. That's like near the, isn't that the Kabuki man tweeting her? Well, wasn't he like tweeting her in her boyfriend's stead? Yes, but he gave that's... good advice. <laughs> he did give good advice. Yes. That is catfishing. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure more banana split for me, but good <laughs> advice. But in the boyfriend's place, what? What? What is happening? Guys, I'm telling you, this episode was so chaotic. I'm like, <laughs> it was. <laughs> One thing I did genuinely really love, though, was when I and Sarasa made up at the end. Yeah. Or, you know, made up enough. I says to Sarasa something like, how do I forget a memory that I really want to forget, but I can't? And Sarasa says this beautiful thing. It was like several sentences, but I only have one written down. She says something like, keep overwriting bad memories with good ones, and eventually the bad ones will fade away. And I thought that was actually really beautiful because we all have trauma in our life or bad things happen, but we have to live on and allow the good things into our lives to keep healing. And then the bad things feel more distant. And I really loved that. Yeah, yeah. I love the sentiment that she is encouraging I to rewrite her bad memories with good ones. I think it's so important for, I think, especially in I's case, you know, like when you've been through such a negative and traumatic situation, it's very easy to just see only like the negative mm -hmm. because when you needed that help or you needed that support it didn't come in time for you to I guess be emotionally balanced and it's clear that I isn't but she's like trying to fix that within herself yeah and so I'm glad that Sarasa was like able to give her that kind of advice mm -hmm. definitely 
So I just have one more floats your boat, which is at the end. Do you have anything else? When the stalker guy ended up finding I and everyone's there to help I from like those people that were holding on to her, I thought it was so funny when Sarasa called the creeps weaklings and then the animation <laughs> just shift. Yeah. So like her face looked like All Might from My Hero Academia. It's exactly what I have written. Yeah, she becomes All Might for a second. <laughs> I, like, died laughing at that moment. I was just like, okay, I needed that, so thanks, Yeah, episode team. <laughs> yes, I always appreciate well-timed comic relief. It was such a detailed drawing, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you good to move into Banana Split? Yeah. All right, guys, I have one Banana Split. And, okay, so <laughs> Uncle Tai Chi, right, he could have, and we discussed this in last week's episode, he could have walked them back, you know, knowing there was a stalker and stuff. But instead of doing that, he just follows them and watches from the bushes. <laughs> so, like, it's good he was looking out, but he absolutely could have just walked them. Very stupid. That was that was hot fudge for me. Okay, no, I feel that. It's valid. Banana split for me was that, because obviously I didn't give a shit about the stalker's backstory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, I liked the depiction of, I know they say like neat, but there's actual word for like people like that who close themselves off to society and they just watch anime and read all day and like never go out. There is a word for it. I don't remember what it is, guys. Sorry. But I like the fact that through fan and, um, he was able to find community and make friends, mm -hmm. start working again. Yeah. And so the reason why it's in my banana split is because I don't give a shit about this man. Yes. <laughs> Valid. But I'm not, I'm not harsh enough that it's like, oh, like, obviously, I'm not mad that he found that because I think that that's important. So it's banana split for me. Yeah, like, it's good that he found that, but it absolutely should have stopped there. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, we can move on into hot fudge if you like. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> get ready. Get those spoons ready. Get those, get those. Who's ready? Okay, y'all get in the hottest but Okay, Godiva style. Ooh. No sponsor. But y'all can sponsor us though, Shoujo Sunday. Please do. Please do. Yes. I know y'all make ice cream as well. Mm. Anyway, so. Now I want ice cream. <laughs> right, right. So to get through these episodes, we actually needed it. Yeah, honestly. Honestly. But okay, so first of all, let's go for Tai Chi because like I said, I'll actually, I'll start with him. So I thought he was a punk ass bitch. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that your niece ran to you crying about the stalker that literally made her lose her career. And you told her to walk back with her roommate, knowing that the stalker was still out and about and you didn't call the police he's a piece of shit he's an asshole i don't know why he didn't just call the police instead of hiding in the fucking bushes i don't know why he didn't show up especially when it got to the point you see i and her trauma hiding behind sarasa shaking crying mm -hmm. and then she runs off before she even ran off, I think it would have been so important for I to not only have Sarasa standing up for her in that moment, but to also have her uncle standing up for her as the male presence in her life to like shut stuff down. Even if he wants to hear shit out, just being that steady force that you're there, okay? You don't just leave that type of shit to the wayside. And I think that this was an opportunity that he lost out on to like like make up for the fact that he allowed his niece to live with her abuser post putting that lock on her door. He allowed that to happen. He knew what happened to her. He didn't take her out of that place. And so this was an opportunity for him to be a show of force. He doesn't have to punch him or whatever, but it's like he could have talked aggressively. He could have figured out what was going on. But I just think doing it the way that he did was such it was just a terrible decision. Yeah. It's also like being guilty by the negligence of not helping when he knows he could and should have. Yeah. And also he's part of the faculty at COCA. Are they just allowing people like this on the campus? Exactly. Is he okay with that? Exactly. Yeah. He absolutely should have done more. This is just like one example. And the, the, what's even worse is that this isn't any other student. This is literally like your blood family. Yeah. And he knows 
knows what she's been through. And he knows exactly what she's been through. And he didn't call the police. He didn't put on a show or whatever. And I feel that given the state of the world, I personally, I don't agree with this episode even being an episode because there are stalkers, like we mentioned in the last episode, there are stalkers that will go and find you and literally try to kill you or harm you just because you want to be an idol. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to be famous. This is just something that women, like all women, face. And to make light of something like that, like, oh, well, you should find out their side. Why do you need to humanize somebody that was stalking a literal minor? Yeah, there's no need. There's no need. And then in the last episode, he had all this shit to say once I was leaving. And it's like, why didn't you start talking when she was still there? Mm -hmm. Because you being quiet and holding out her bag, how is she not going to take that as threatening? Right. Especially like he could have put something in the bag, you know, like you just don't know. Right. People are doing that now. They put like Apple tags on people's car. Oh my God. People suck. Right. For like stalking, trafficking, all that's like, it's, it's a lot. And so I just, I did not need stalker redemption at all. No. The next thing I wanted to get into was Sarasa. So the thing about it is that, is it shitty that I left Sarasa to the stalker that she was entirely fearful of? In a way, yes. Because she doesn't know what he's capable of. But if you're scared enough to run off crying, like, obviously, like, it would be good if you could take your roommate. But I'm not going to entirely fault I in the situation because she was, like, reliving her trauma. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Sarasa in this event, first of all, why do you want to know the point of view of her stalker? Right. When he literally caused the end of her career. Why did she almost tell her stalker that she was I's roommate? So then if she can't find I, he could just follow you. He can find out ex- what exact room you are in. So you are literally endangering her. And I don't give a shit about Tai Chi jumping out of the fucking bushes to say, oh, you shouldn't say that. Maybe you should have been in the fucking But Anyway, why are you airing out your grievances with I to her stalker about wanting to be friends with her? So do you think that listening to the the stalker side of the story is going to make you friends with I when literally if you're trying to build a relationship with somebody, maybe not ask someone who tormented them on how to do that. Maybe you should ask the person that you know you had issues with. Like that's that's what you do. Mm -hmm. And then to end it off and it's like, y'all, not only were they talking to this man, they talked to this man for a fucking while. Yeah. At least an hour or something. Like the time changed. It was like nighttime. Well, she became like friends with him very quickly. Yeah, she became friends with him. She exchanged numbers with him. And it's just like, okay, yeah, you heard whatever his backstory is, but people lie. I just, it is so much. And it's like the fact that they're both minors. Why are you getting this like grown anyway? There's so many things I was just pissed off with when it came to that. I fully understood I yelling and saying, I hate you. For me, it's like, I hope that was equal opportunity hate because fuck her uncle too. But it's just like, you know what this means to her. You know what happened to her. And y'all are just fucking dancing in the street. And for Sarasa to say, if you ran over there because you were worried about me and then you saw I was okay, you should be happy, not angry, really sent me personally. Right. Because she She's watching you dance and have fun and be friends with the person who ended her career and got all this horrible stuff said about her in the media, like fully canceled online. And meanwhile, you're like, la-di-da, let's hear his side of the story. No, thank you. No, thank you at all. Because it's just like, oh, well, if you were happy, like, are you trying to gaslight her? Somebody with trauma? Mm. She has legit trauma and you have a general sense of what's going on. And you're trying to tell her like oh well as if I has the problem in this situation and it's not Sarasa and Tai Chi so I was over that do you have any hot fudge I think I have like two last ones I do I have one hot fudge and one ice cream you scream okay my one hot fudge which I guess in this day and age won't be as hot of a take as it probably was like 10 years ago or something celebrities are regular people 
and you are not entitled to their attention if you see them in public. This is regarding the two guys at the end who see her and recognize her from JPX and they're like, you know, holding her and wanting her attention. Nobody is obligated to give you their time. They're just a person with a job and you happen to know their name and face. I think the fact that they went as far as like fucking holding on to her. Oh my god. I was livid because she fully broke down and it's just like at that point if you are literally her fan you'll be like let go like oh I'm sorry I didn't mean it no yeah yeah I did not like that the handshake event when the guy was giving his backstory Mm -hmm. you know how I feel about that you guys I just don't think that there needs to be events of that type of nature if it involves minors and I was a minor at the time yeah so even if it's like a handshake event that's wrong do you know what people do you don't even know where their hand was Mm. oh I hate it I hate it y'all don't even know and you know how many like I don't want to get too flipping realistic but I'm just saying like there's pedophile there's just a lie and so I just don't think having a handshake event with minors is the best idea if I was in I's situation I would have sued them on grounds of like child endangerment like if they're trying to fire her and then false um what is it about when like people fire you and like oh I should know but I don't I don't remember the term but there's something about it where it's like you can sue for like wrongful unemployment there's a word for it I don't remember but in any case I thought that was messed up and then leading to the end of the episode with Ayako yeah I I I knew when we saw that episode and that teacher started fat shaming her I knew it. I was just like, she's going to get an eating disorder. I could just tell. And lo and behold. Yeah, when she was like, I'm on a diet now in choir class, I felt it in my chest. And I, I mean, we'll get into it in episode five, but that was my like ice cream you scream was just the fact that she has an obvious emerging eating disorder. Just my whole heart shattered. Yeah, there's going to be Rocky Road in the next episode guys oh mm-hmm. but yeah so that was all of my hot fudge i do have ice cream you scream okay yeah you can get into that okay ice cream you scream so i don't remember this girl's name but it's i's second year advisor i'm really bad with names in this anime there's a lot of this teacher that for like the next episode notes so i i'm sorry i don't remember no it's okay guys because it's like there are a lot of names and i just remember her as being i's advisor she has bangs and she like does something to like low-key push part of her hair back anyway <laughs> i think she's a nosy no good bitch too oh i don't like her either i cannot believe that she went as far as listening so it's not as if oh like she just took that picture and went she went and listened to that conversation between tai chi sarasa and the stalker then takes a picture of sarasa and the stalker and for me it's just like i don't know what she gains by being this catty because to me the way that I see it if you have to do this to your subordinates you must be a shitty actress right right you have no merit you have no hope and you are trying to do what you can to ruin a girl's life they worked so hard the first year students to get into coca they worked extremely hard and you're jeopardizing it for what and the thing about it is that this never actually gets resolved like it's like they say that because sarasa ended up walking off to go try to find i with tai chi while they were trying to accuse her of having a fucking boyfriend and she literally says oh my alibi is tai chi and then they try to end it off by saying oh well the second year students made them take on extra cleaning chores and so for the thing is for me if a teacher is involved why didn't you go to the teacher because i cannot believe that what ended up happening first of all her stalker showed up to campus so that's low-key putting all of y'all bitches in danger and then her uncle but yes your teacher was also like involved so after getting his alibi why are you then still punishing people that were just low-key in a traumatic situation why does i have to clean extra for dealing with a fucking stalker why does sarasa have to clean extra for going out to find her roommate to make sure like oh nobody ends up fucking killing her and y'all are doing all of this extra stuff and taking pictures of bitches and it's just like this is not theater this is not coca behavior coca 
Ahsoka type behavior? Like, what do you gain from, like, anyway? Yeah. Right. If she was confident enough in her own abilities to stand out on her own, she wouldn't be trying to tear down all the people around her. And below her, they're freshmen. They're first years. Why is she so threatened? Right. Right. And truly the fact that Tai Chi was there should have excused anything. I don't know why they're being punished like that. I would have protested that shit because it's like, y'all bitches don't even, well, the one of them actually does know what's going on and she's just being fucking catty. But it's like, I'm not cleaning extra because y'all don't understand the gravity of this situation. Yeah. No empathy. It's like one thing if you want to make Sarsa go clean because she left your fake ass investigation. But to make I, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Do you want to move into episode five? Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you had one ice cream you screamed. Oh, no, no, sorry. Yeah, I meant to say we covered it, actually. It was um, it was about Ayako's eating disorder. Okay, yeah, yeah. Alrighty. Episode five, The Chosen Maidens. Here is our soft serve summary. The twins congratulate Ayako on her evident weight loss. Sugimoto excitedly says that they're going to see the winter troupe perform Romeo and Juliet that afternoon. Ai keeps trying to get Sarasa's attention, but can't seem to. In a flashback, we see her ask Taichi for advice on how to apologize to Sarasa for saying something mean to her. On the way back from the performance in the present day, Sarasa recites Romeo's lines, having shockingly memorized them only after hearing them once, and it stops all of the girls in their tracks. I poetically thinks about what a shining star Sarasa is and how she wants to shine beside her. Without thinking, I grab Sarasa's hand and tells her that she wants to be her friend in front of the whole class. Sarasa gladly accepts, and it brings all of the girls to tears in spite of themselves. Time moves forward, and Ai struggles to call Sarasa by her first name. In checking their rankings at school, Ai is 24th, Sarasa moved from the 40s to number 39. However, Ayako finds herself at dead last. The choir teacher calls out Ayako again, like in the last episode, saying he can't hear her at all. He asks if she's feeling okay or eating enough, and she says that she is. We get a flashback of Ayako growing up, having always wanted to go to Koka since she was a kid. In the present, we see Ayako eat with the others and immediately go to the bathroom before she can digest it. Meanwhile, Ai confesses that she hasn't been trying thus far and has decided to aim to be one of Koka's top stars. The tap teacher confronts Ayako about her weight loss, saying that she shouldn't go about it in the wrong way and demands a report on everything she eats from that day on. Her eating disorder is revealed in this report. The choir teacher reprimands the tap teacher for commenting on Ayako's weight in the first place. The tap teacher claims she was just preparing her for working in the troop, where she'll face all kinds of verbal abuse and hardship. Ai finds Ayako in the bathroom and tries to be kind, but Ayako breaks down and runs away. In choir class the next day, Ayako passes out. A doctor tells her to rest up for a few days, but she's devastated to miss class. While texting her sister, she kindly tells her that she can come home anytime if she's in any pain. Ayako's thinking about giving up her dreams when the choir teacher bangs on her dorm room door and begs her not to give up saying that she wouldn't have been accepted into Coca if she didn't have a gift to give. She returns to class after her doctor gives her the okay, and she conquers a beautiful solo performance. Ayako apologizes to Ai for snapping on her in the bathroom, and that's the end of the episode, and I, like, teared up again just thinking about it. Oh my god. Do you have any theme ideas? <laughs> I just said you just need that one person to believe in you and want the best in you to succeed. I love that. That's so true, too. Yeah. Mine was more about the heavier, the even heavier stuff, I should say. If weight loss is your goal, there are healthy ways to go about it, and, uh, <laughs> purging is absolutely not one of them. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's all I can really say on that, I think. Yeah. 
Do you have any sprinkles on top? Yeah, so the sprinkle on top that I had is actually the song. So the song that Ayako sang, like, by sunset. I feel that at that point, we were able to truly see how gifted Ayako is Mm -hmm. as a Koka student. And I feel like if you think about it, when the sun sets, it's like, okay, that's one day, but then it's going to rise again and you have another day. Yeah. And so just seeing her sing that song especially after she like decided to keep going i thought it was so impactful so yeah it really was such a beautiful moment yeah getting into floats your boat i'm gonna kick it off and lighten things up here so here's a quote from i one star stood out among the others that star was sarasa watanabe i belong up there beside her a gay <laughs> finally seeing the gay okay it is it is gay <laughs> girl the rainbow is out yeah that is a shooting star with a rainbow tail if i ever saw one yes because okay miss mama said anytime i think about sarasa the poetry just comes out of her i said okay right just right Woo! i was just like oh okay dang you know yeah <laughs> i mean i like my friends too but i don't know if i'd be thinking about them with like poetic terms right i don't think i'm gonna be like oh i just want to shine beside her if it wasn't gay <laughs> right You're right right it's like i'm not trying to write some sonnets <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah in that same scene, though, I loved Ai's apology and their friendship blossoming in front of everybody, like, with no shame. I know that she was kind of thinking, like, Sarasa's this weird girl, but now she's just embracing her. And they want to be friends, and I love that that's finally coming together. Right, and to be honest, I think it was a good show of character development, just because she'd been rejecting quite literally everyone. Yeah. And so, in becoming friends with Sarasa, then she was able to open up and become friends with other people in her class and to try to talk to them like I'm not saying because she really thinks of only Sarsa as her friend so it's not to say that she's not that she thinks of the rest of her classmates as her friends but she's a lot more open to communicating with them now yeah I've noticed that too yeah I love the fact that rather than just being stuck on like shaming Sarasa for not knowing like this winter troop pose that Sugimoto was doing, that she was just like, we need to go see them so like you can understand there's more to Koka than like Rose of Versailles and Oscar. Yeah. And so I love that they just made it a class get together. Like, we're all going to go and watch this now. Yeah, I really liked that too. Yeah. And like, they got to meet the top star. Mm -hmm. I thought that was nice as well. Like, yeah, it's like, y'all don't even know. Yeah, Sugimoto was so starstruck that she got a nosebleed. It was really cute. Yeah, yeah. I just love seeing like their passion come out that way. Mm -hmm. And we got to see Sarasa like being. Being a little prodigy, okay? Yeah, reciting those lines. Right, she saw that shit once. She's like, oh, I got this. Yeah, it like helps you further understand how she got accepted into Coca. I feel like she has just this talent, this innate talent for the stage. Yeah, yeah. I love that Ai is determined to call Sarasa by her first name, but every time she tries, she fails. And she even tries to, like, kind of passive-aggressively invite her to the bathroom with her, thinking, oh, girls just always go to the bathroom together, right? It's, like, really cute that she's trying to navigate that and figure it out. Yeah, you know, I mean, that does happen. Like, people go, like, yeah. in groups. But usually, like, if you're already around, like, a big group of women, I don't think that it's necessarily... I think that's what she was missing is like the situation of that happening. So it's like, okay, well, if you're out and about and you're surrounded by people you don't know, then most definitely girls will go to the bathroom with one another. But if you're surrounded by other girls, you don't have much to worry about. So Right. There's not really like that privacy you need to seek out when you all just live and go to school together. Right, right. But she's trying. She is. I'm glad to just see her trying and, you know, being gay. (laughs) Yeah, our soft girl gay. (laughs) Yeah. 
Also very, very cool that I is finding that passion and that drive within her, knowing that she wants to be a top star now. I mean, it's also like low-key because she was looking at Sarasa in a certain way and she's like, I want to be a star shining beside her, which is so gay and great. But I just love that she's getting that drive from somewhere. Yeah, we just see so much of Ai's character development because she went from not having friends to having a friend and being friendly with people. And now she's finally shown passion for Coca. It just took her actually being in the school <laughs> to have yeah. But I mean, I'm glad that we were able to just see that and like, okay, she wants to do it for real now. Unlike what Taichi was talking about in the last episode about how she's just doing things to like get by, I guess. Mm-hmm. I have one last floats your boat and it's just the choir teacher calling out the tap teacher because someone needed to. Right. And like the thing about that for me is that I put an ice cream, you scream, not him standing up to her, but like how they could handle that situation. Yeah. And her response made me like viscerally angry. Right. Because the thing about it is that she said what she said and she's trying to be unapologetic about it. And I think that this is the disadvantage of having the male teachers because oh male and male presenting I think that because that tap teacher is a woman and this is supposed to be a school for all women, that when it comes to these sort of decisions or the way that people think, they sort of take a step back because it's like, well, she's a woman, so she would know what's best or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel that that's not right, especially in this respect. So I felt that it would have been good if they would have been able to bring in another female teacher to like kind of cut the tap dance teacher shit because she was coming at it with a holier than thou, I know better than you or whatever. And it's going to be like this and da 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 And basically discounting these people's feelings. But the thing is that the choir's teacher, Ani Dara Sensei, I think, had fucking points yeah okay got to the heart of it could basically say i know ayako is more sensitive why did you tell her that you didn't have to say it in that way and she was so determined to shut her down and the thing about it for me is that that tap dancer knew that her words incited a fucking eating disorder and all she's doing is looking at this paper yeah Yeah. You're looking at this report. How is that a fucking solution? Anyway, sorry, guys. I started getting into it. No, it's okay because, I mean, I'm feeling it too. I just, I can't articulate it, I think, as well as you can. No, because I had Onidera Sensei in my floats your boat. Yeah. Just in general, especially when he came to, like, the dorm and was encouraging her through the... Anyway, but that's That's my rocky rocky road. road. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'm actually all out of floats your boat if you have any left. I'm glad that I and Ayaka made up at the end. Yeah, that was really sweet. Yeah. They just communicated so clearly with one another where they were coming from and why they could have come off that way. I thought it was a beautiful little showcase of friendship and good communication. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's especially, like, needed because, like, you know, teenagers and anime, they can just go off the wrong thing for, like, episodes upon episodes. And it's like, well, actually, like... This is how things are. Yeah. It's like you could have a fight in public that could have been solved in five minutes, but we make a whole episode about who's going to apologize or not. Yeah. Oops. That was made Sama. Oh, no. <laughs> right. And low-key half of this episode, but at least it was only half and not the full episode. Yeah. Do you want to move into Banana Split? Sure. Okay. So, honestly, this is probably closer to, like, Ice Cream, You Scream, just like my last Banana Split, but... I mean, I guess it's good that the tap teacher told Ayako not to go about losing weight the wrong way. But she also literally could have never told her to lose weight in the first place. So there's that. But yeah, I don't know. It's all bad. (laughs) I guess it's not banana split. I just, you know, because I mean, I compartmentalize scenes too. So I'm not going to say that it's not good because it's like, you try to find the good. Yeah, I'm looking (laughs) for the good. So it's like, okay, at least I said this. That's good about it. (laughs) 
Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, I totally get you. I said, Sarasa ignoring I is I's actions catching up with her. Oh. I put that in banana split because I wasn't going to say, like, floats your boat because it's just like, Sarasa, like, you know this girl's trying to talk to you. But at the same time, it was just like, all the shit that I was saying and popping off and say whatever, it was just like, okay, like, <laughs> low key, I get it. Because, <laughs> like, I mean, I don't think that's the right way to go about it. You could just be like, oh, I'm not in this space to talk right now. Or maybe we could talk later instead of just ignoring her yeah but i mean i understood it off of the basis that i had said a lot of hard shit by the time that sarasa decided to ignore her so i had that in banana split because i didn't like it i just understood it (laughs) yeah yeah and then i think Oh, I said it's okay to learn at your own pace, but it's surprising that Sarasa didn't research more about Coca after being accepted. Yeah, I was surprised by that too. That she doesn't know about the winter trip. I don't know how you could get into a school like that, that it's harder to get into Coca than to get into Tokyo University. I'm going to compare it to like Harvard. So it's like... I could not imagine getting into some particular major at Harvard and not researching the shit out of it before I even stepped on campus. You know, like, who do I need to look out for? The professors, this, that, the third, whatever. And in this regard, it's just like, okay, we know that you love Rose of Versailles. We know that you want to play Oscar. But what else do you like about Coca? Like, it's like, yes, you want to be a top star, but you can't be one dimensional in that sense because it's not like they do Rose of... Oh, I'm assuming they don't do Rose of Versailles like year-round. I'm sure that they do other shows. And if you're trying to eat, you probably want to be in other... Not just the spring troupe or the summer troupe or whatever. Like, you want to be in all of them. So, yeah. So I was, like, surprised by that. Yeah, me too. Like, if you have dreams and that's what you want, you want to be part of this thing, you're going to know that thing inside out. But she's just, like, winging it. Yeah, and it's like, sometimes that's good, but other times it's just like, no, like, how have y'all been? They've been in that, they've been in that school for months. Yeah, I think they said four months now. Yeah, so they've been there for months. And you still don't know some shit, like, basic stuff? Well, not maybe not basic, but still, like, at least movements? Y'all, you don't know that? Like, so, yeah. Do you have any other banana split? No, I just have one rocky road and an ice cream you scream. Okay, I had a a couple rocky road. Oh, let's get into rocky road then. Yeah. So, the choir teacher, who we love, encourages Ayako outside her door while she's thinking about quitting and giving up. He says not only exactly what she needs to hear in that moment, but all true things. And Ayako decides to return to class when she gets better and her voice returns and not give up her dreams. And that entire sequence of, you know, the choir teacher just banging on her door, saying it's an emergency to someone who's trying to, like, pull him out of the dorms, and just being insistent on giving this girl the true advice that she needs, saying that she wouldn't be here if she didn't have something to offer. I just, it hit me so hard for some reason, and I'm like, wow, I'm crying right now. (laughs) Like, I didn't even, like, realize I started crying. She was at such a low point. And she was able to pick herself up and try again. I'm just really glad she had support from the choir teacher, especially after how ruthless the other teacher was. Right. And I think the thing about it is that you work so hard to get into this school. There's so much pressure. And the thing is, is that Ayako started getting caught up in like her family being proud of her of being in that school. Mm. But the thing is that her family, yes, they're proud of her, but it's not like they were pushing her to do coca they just wanted her to do like whatever her dream was they wanted to fully support it her parents wanted to support it her older sister wanted to support it and so i resonated so much with her struggling because it's like there are some points when you're like depressed and you're down and you're dealing with these things and then your dreams it's as if you stop dreaming And so then what used to be your dream 
suddenly feels like someone else's because it's like you're living a lie, right? Oh, my whole heart. That, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I'm i doing my best not to boohoo cry right now. But it's like when you are at that place and it's so low and you don't even know how to ask for like help, you know? And the thing about it with Ayako is like she had two other roommates. The class rep was her roommate. Hoshino like was also her roommate and so it's like there's no way that they didn't know right right they had to have noticed something it's heartbreaking because it's like okay like we all clocked it when she came back into the room and she's like crying in her pillow and everything and i get that they aren't like family they aren't even like friends you know but just woman to women, just empathize with somebody who's like in that much pain and trying to figure something out. I don't know why they didn't give that to her. So I cried about that. Then I also cried because seeing Ayako after she passes out and Onidera Sensei like takes her, like he takes her to the hospital. And she, at that point, that's when she finally started talking about, like, eating disorder. Because obviously these people, like, know about it. And finally having somebody else, like, be kind to her about it. And she's just like, you know, like, I'm under so much pressure. I'm the last person in this class. I can't afford to, like, because I'm already at, like, the end of the class. I can't afford to, like, lose class because you give me something, like, for the fever and everything. And just seeing her open up to that doctor and him having, like, the kind bedside manner that she like really needed because at that point like yes I was trying to help her when she talked about how somebody at in JPX was also had some sort of eating disorder or whatever but being blunt in that way did not help that's not what Ayako needed yeah yeah she needed a legitimate intervention people commenting like on her weight like they said oh you're losing weight I think Chica and the other twin talked about oh like you're losing weight and being happy about it like she just needed somebody to be kind and to be there and so seeing her open up to the doctor that was a lot then also seeing Onidera sensei shake his head because he knew that she needed that time a way to get where she needed to be and to actually like recover. Yeah. Ani Darrison like, really went out of his way to defend her to that tap dance teacher to take her to the hospital and then when they get back like he's trying to encourage her but he could like tell that she's like down in the dumps and so at that point then he starts just doing his best just to tell her like that Ayako is talented and even if she's at the last of this class she's still a Above all of the people that hadn't gotten into the school and that he didn't want her to give up because at that point like she was in her room and she was like legitimately just thinking about giving up and he's just like no like I don't want you to give up you can do this you can make it and stuff and so it just really touched my heart to see Ani Darasente like really step up to the plate and like be that teacher that guardian like figure that is truly there for like his students and like wants to see them like succeed like it doesn't Coca doesn't always have to be like this dog eat dog type of world and I'm so glad that he supported her because he said everything that she truly needed to hear. I'm trying to think if there's anything else, guys. I did my best. Not I cried. <laughs> it's so, no, you're fine. No, if I was crying, I wouldn't be able to speak. So you did very good. <laughs> I think the last rocky road that I actually had was also just in reference to Ayako. Like, this is before Ani Dara since they started to, like, come to her door and encourage her through the door. I got it, you know? Yeah. And I already talked about some of my hard times on this podcast. But when you are in a terrible place, like, mentally, physically, all of those things, I got it that Ayako, she wanted her family and she wanted her sister, but at the same time, she'd been doing Doing her best to not have them worry about her and so rather than just explaining like what's going on first of all she saying things to her sister it's not as if her sister even got it right but she's talking about all of these foods that she missed eating yeah and that she wanted to eat that really broke my heart right because it's like you know doing all this stuff it's not as if she hates food it's just she's just trying to like fit in so she's talking about all this food she wants to eat and not talking about the actual problem but in that moment of like pain and sorrow she's still like 
it's like she's trying to talk about it without saying it at the same time. Yeah. Or talking about something else, even though it's like clearly this isn't what you usually like talk about or whatever with your sister and stuff, right? And so then the sister picks up on it and she's just like, if you need help and you need to like go home, you can come home. I'm telling you guys, and it's like I'm crying now saying it. I was sobbing. Because I have definitely done that on multiple occasions of I am like fucked up. My thoughts are screwed up. I don't know what the day is. I don't know if there's a tomorrow. And I'm not able to articulate that to my sister. And so rather than talking about that, it's like, I'm talking about other things, but because of the fact of the way that I'm saying certain things, they can tell that something's like wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, even though I do wish that this episode had a trigger warning, I would say hats off to the creators or the animators of the team for writing a scene like that. Because it's like, I really saw myself in that moment. Yeah, it was so beautifully executed in my own way. I could relate, especially to, I think, as, as like an artist, like not in my own way, like for sure not on the same scale, but I've had times where, where it really just felt like, why am I doing this? Why have I spent every day since I was three thinking about music only for it to lead me here? And that's like, I'm, I'm happy where I am now, but I'm talking more like my early 20s, like very painful nights some nights and just to kind of see it articulated in this way in its own in, in its own very specific situation I felt like I could relate to it in my own way so that scene also hit me very hard yeah it was hard but it's like I'm glad that she has Anadira Sensei and that he stood up for her yeah and because he stood up for her she was able to come back yeah it was beautiful do you have any hot fudge? The one thing that I have is just really about that tap dance teacher. I think she's like a rancid bitch and she should be fired. Yes. Yes. To basically create a situation in which one of the students gets an eating disorder based off of your words. Maybe you shouldn't have that job. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. I just have one ice cream you scream. It's just a quote from Aiko from choir class before anything had really happened, like before she passed out. The teacher asked her if she was okay, if she was feeling all right, if she was eating enough. And she's like, yeah, I am. I'm fine. But she thinks to herself, first they don't want me to eat and now they do. Can't they make up their minds? I just put that in ice cream, you scream because I was internally screaming at just how sad that is. Yeah. And it's like, it's such a mixed message and stuff. Yeah. That teacher just being like, oh, make sure you eat. It's just like, girl, I'm about to push you down these stairs. Like, are you serious? You started this girl on an eating disorder and you knew it. She knew it. Ugh. And it's like, the teacher's disgusted and y'all knew it. And it's not until the girl passes out that y'all do something. It's like, no, at that point, this is intervention fucking time. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is y'all pulling the teachers together, having some like onset meeting, like along with like the dorm mother of like, what can we do to fix this situation? How should we talk to her? Who are the best people to talk to her about this? Should we bring her family into it? Because I think that she's also a minor. Right. I believe. Yeah. She applied early. She was only like 16 when she applied or something. Right. And so she is still a minor. So why aren't you making her parents aware? Because the reason why I think they aren't doing that is because they would have had that tap dance teacher's ass the fuck out of that school. Because you're not going to have my child end up getting an eating disorder and they're not going to raise some sort of like hell. Yeah. I mean, at that point, I guess they also could have taken her out of the school. But it's like, I just feel that she needed... Besides Ani Daris and say she needed that love and care and people around her that cared about her that could like rebuild her self esteem and like remind her of why she dreamed of this in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Do we want to head into episode six? Sure. So, episode six A Glimpse of Stardom. Here is our soft serve summary. The episode opens with the girls complaining that they've only been learning the basics so far at Coca. In class, Sarasa asks their acting teacher to help them learn expression, since the other teachers are always telling them to use it. He asks her to do an impression of him, and he'd consider it if it was good, but he didn't seem to like it because he just told them to open their textbooks. 
Sarasa receives 16 roses in the mail for her 16th birthday, assumed to be from her boyfriend. It was signed ambiguously, from your fan of the red rose. Her boyfriend says that he has a gift for her, but he wants to wait until she's home for the summer so he could give it to her in person. Ai is determined to get Sarasa a gift she'll love even more than the roses. She's also determined to finally call Sarasa by her first name for her birthday. She gets her a figurine and finally calls her Sarasa both in writing and aloud, and it makes her so happy. In acting class, the teacher assigns them groups to work on a scene from Romeo and Juliet over two weeks to present to the class. Ai's group struggles to find a practice space, ultimately practicing outside. We learn that Ai never learned to read kanji in a conversation with Kaoru outside. Sugimoto loans Sarasa her DVD of the winter troupe doing Romeo and Juliet to help level up their performance. Ai's group does pretty well, but the acting teacher tells Sarasa that her impression of the actor playing Tybalt was pretty good, but she does not have what it takes. And if she doesn't change, she won't make it at Coca. So that is episode six. For themes, what do you have, Chica? I said, don't be defeated before an attempt. Keep going and see it through till the end. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Mine was just like, I don't know. I, I couldn't really find something that I felt really encapsulated the whole episode, except maybe speaking up can ignite change. Yeah. Because now they might be able to try acting and then classes after them would be able to try acting first year. I think it was really important, the fact that that they kind of stood up for themselves and they wanted to try doing this. Although that's not really sprinkled on top. But <laughs> right, right. Do you have any sprinkles on top? I don't. <laughs> me neither, me neither. And my floats your boat's really just a couple teensy little quotes. I just thought it was so pure. Just eyes pureness is adorable. She's like, my first friend's birthday is today. What do I do? And I love that. It was so cute. <laughs> right. Now that that is her first friend for real, it's like she wants to, I guess, reestablish the foundation of their friendship with a gift. Well, yeah. And like you want to make your friend's birthday special. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, one, I was just like, oh, she wants to do something for her. But then also I I was just like, she has a fucking boyfriend? I thought the, the Kabuki man and that other guy who is her actual boyfriend, I thought that they were just like friends, you know? Like, oh, childhood friends. I thought they were family members. Right! So I'm just like, wait, that's your man? <laughs> wait, 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 what? Yeah. She's about to have a side chick soon, so. <laughs> For real? Okay. And first of all, that's something else that was in my filter boat. Oh, same. As soon as I got her that action figure and she said Sarsa's name, you literally see the stars show up in Sarsa's eyes. I was like, gay. <laughs> gay. While we're on the gayness, too, <laughs> I have a couple gay points here. The gay agenda. So I is like peeking through the curtain and seeing Sarasa on Twitter and her boyfriend's Twitter profile icon is a frog and his name is like J-Bot or something. So I is thinking to herself, her boyfriend is a frog and a bot account. I will conquer that frog. Gay. Gay. Gay? We're so happy with it. I said gay. You go, girl. <laughs> I'm rooting for you. Yes. Oh my god, I'm so rooting. We're like halfway through now, so I'm like really ready to see this take off. Right, for real, it's just like kiss. <laughs> kiss, a kiss, yes. <laughs> yes, but like no cheating though. No, no, respectfully. She's gonna realize her boyfriend's a deadbeat sooner or later. Right, because it's just like, okay man, like first of all, if that's actually your girlfriend, this is low-key in my, this was in my, um. Oh, I have ice cream, you scream, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind, I'll, we'll wait. Yeah, yeah. I have one more gay point. It's a little later in the episode, though, when they're casting themselves in Who Will Play Who in Romeo and Juliet, and I is Juliet, of course, and Sarasa ends up being Tybalt, and I is thinking to herself, Sarasa would do better as the romantic Romeo than the dark Tybalt. I mean. Come on, girl. <laughs> okay. She got Juliet. She knows who she wants her Romeo to be. Like. Exactly. Exactly. I was like, the gay vibes is here. The rainbows is yeah. here. Come on. <laughs> Slowly more and more gay vibes as the episodes go on and I'm living for it. Yeah. I just had one more floats your boat. It was just the fact that 
Sugimoto loaned Sarasa the DVD to help with the performance. I thought that was really nice. Right. I said that Hoshino, because Hoshino is Sugimoto's roommate, so she asked her to lend it to Sarasa. Oh, I think I called her Kaoru. I think that might be her first name. Yeah, Kaoru is her first name. Sorry, y'all. So Kaoru is like sharp, like she's like can see like based off of the last episode, like, oh, she just needs to watch something and she gets the lines. Yeah, yeah. And she was reading it quite stilted. <laughs> quite. <laughs> and so it's like, okay, well, we have the <laughs> we have the DVD. So here you go, girl, you know, like do your best. And so I like that she, as the leader of group five or group E, I'm glad that she she was able to like realize that about Sarasa and be like, okay, this is how you can help. And Loki, it actually really could have helped I as well. Although she does need to practice with like her kanji, but maybe like seeing the scene also would have helped I at the same time. I think so. I think it would have. Yeah. I will say, I guess maybe this would be Banana Split. Do you have any more floats your boat? No. Okay. So I guess going into Banana Split, just coming right off of what you said, I just thought of this right now. It's interesting, but it's also a little concerning that Sarasa is an impressionist. I think we're learning that. Yeah. As opposed to like a performer who can find it within or or what have you, (laughs) from what I remember of acting class. Yeah. So I don't know how to feel about that of like someone at Coca being an impressionist rather than a performer. I picked up on that too. I put in Ice Cream You Scream. Oh. I picked up on it because I understood why Ando said what he did. Because her doing an impression of an actress doing the role that she's doing, she won't be a top star for doing that. Yeah. I just didn't like the way that he framed it. And maybe it's just because of how well Onidera Sensei did in the last episode. But I just feel like there's a way to go about saying something that won't be harmful to the student you're talking to. Yeah, I agree. I think when it comes to Sarasa, is it good that she's imitating people? No. But based off of what she was able to do, like he had all of these compliments for her when he was watching it. And so I feel like rather than saying you'll never be a top star, because he didn't even clarify it. He's like, you'll never be a top star if you do that. He didn't clarify. I feel like he could have clarified it. I think he could have even reported it to say, I see what you're doing. And presence wise, she's on the right track. She knew where to look. And it's like, you can give feedback in that way of, this is what I like. This is what I dislike. Yeah, we we love the sandwich method. (laughs) Right. To just sort of start off by like, you're never going to be a top star. Like, why would you just screw with her dream like that? It's almost like seeing her die a little bit. Yeah, I would feel just the way Ayako did the other day if I was Sarasa. I would go home and be like, well, what am I doing then? Right. You know? Right. That's why explicit feedback in notes is so important. Only giving someone just the good or just the bad isn't going to be constructive. It's going to be damaging in one way or the other. Right. And I mean, I feel like maybe because of the fact that he knows she could do better or be even better than the rest of the class like maybe that's why he wanted to be harsh because that's technically what Kaoru was looking for when he was giving back feedback and he gave her feedback and she was like wait that's it yeah and he was like yeah but he had all of it for Sarasa and she technically did the best and it's like okay well I expect more out of you so I'm gonna say this I just feel like there's a better way to go about doing that yeah yeah I agree oh I did have a banana split. Okay, go ahead. So, and this is also like low key, like, is it Inception? Because it's like, I'm talking about Chica, but I also am. (laughs) Chica, oh, yeah. but <laughs> 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 okay, so I think that Chica, who was in group E with Sarasa and Kaoru and I, I think she's having an identity problem because she is a twin. And so Chiaki is like excited to be Juliet, and Chica also got Juliet, but she was like nervous. And I think they're just so used to doing things together, but it's like, okay, well, it's clear. Clear based off of this episode who actually is more invested in Coca and who's sort of just tagging along in that sense because she could have also been Juliet but she decides to be the nurse and so I think that just made me question like what type of star does she want to be because I mean 
it's perfectly fine to be a supporting character or to be an extra, but is that really like what she wants? Yeah, I noticed that she like gave her twin a look like, oh, she's playing Juliet. Maybe I shouldn't. It, like I was really trying to interpret what she was thinking. And I'm wondering how that will unfold going forward. Yeah, because it's like, is she just not as passionate about acting? Right. Or does she just think she's not as good as her twin hmm. in doing it? And so she doesn't want to like try. Yeah. Because she wouldn't technically measure up in that sense. Like there's a lot of ways they could go about it so i'm interested to see how it plays out me too do you want to head into i scream you scream yeah all right so i don't mean to be a total buzzkill but why are they expecting to learn anything more than the basics their first year let alone their first four months at coca they need a foundation to build on to become these top stars right um I know, I'm so boring. (laughs) No, no, it's not that you're boring. It's just that I guess they just want to see how it will play out. They want to have, like, more fun. Yeah, and I get it. Yeah, it's like they just wanted to have more fun with Ando Sensei. And so it's like, well, can we do this? Like, it's also possible for people to learn, like, the basics of acting while actually acting. Yeah. So it's like, I get why, because it's just like, okay, well, rather than reading about it, sometimes it's just easier for people to actually act certain well pun intended act certain things out than just reading about it because it's like okay i can read about it but certain people aren't going to retain that information unless they're physically like doing something or like they have some sort of method that makes it stick in their mind so i guess that's why but yeah yeah Oh, yeah, the boyfriend. That's the only other one I have. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you wanted to get into that. So the boyfriend, if that's your girlfriend, why didn't you text her like whenever you woke up or? Right. (laughs) Oh, my God. I have done long distance relationships before. And if you are not in, I don't want to say constant communication, but regular communication, that shit will fall apart so fast. He seems so blase about her birthday, too. Like, why does it feel like? Like he doesn't care. I'm getting no loving vibes from him right. at all. Like you want to give her a gift in person? That's cool. What? So she doesn't get anything at all on her actual birthday? If you have something you want to give her, there doesn't have to be an occasion. Send the girl something for her birthday and also give her the important thing when you see her in person because you love her, right? Like what? I'm sorry. I just went off, but like. <laughs> no, no, because it was very much annoying. It's just like, why are you letting your kabuki man outstage you <laughs> in dealing with your own? fucking girlfriend right that's your girlfriend you should already to be honest let's get into communication you should already be talking to her in the morning good morning you know say good night how did class go today instead of reading her fucking twitter feed yeah like actually texting her directly to just be like hey like like i hope things are going okay let me tell you what's going on with me and instead you're allowing your kabuki brother to fucking catfish as you and write poetic shit you're letting him send those flowers. Why didn't you text her to be like, that was my brother or whatever? Because she'll assume she thought it could have maybe it was from you because you're fucking slack. <laughs> yeah and then he's just like oh well i'll text her at the end of the day and it's just like at the end of the fucking day Ugh. so it's like you're just gonna allow hours to go by and you're not even but you're like i'm so happy you were born like you're the best girlfriend i ever had this this that and the third like you're the light of my life da, 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 da. <laughs> you don't got shit to say until the fucking evening insert the potential breakup song by ali and aj here it took too long for you to call back it was my fucking birthday like <laughs> right Right. Right. I mean, and I is ready to come in fucking quick, okay? She got stars coming out of your girl's eyes. Oh, she will conquer that frog. I can't wait for him to open up Twitter and it's just a picture of Ai and Sarasa kissing. <laughs> right, right, from a production, but it looks real. Oh, that would be great. Wait, what if that's an actual conflict? Oh, I would be so excited. Yeah, I love that. If not, maybe I'll write it. <laughs> right, right. Okay, the only redeeming quality... The only redeeming, because it's like he still could have done all of this communication with her anyway, is the fact that he said he was going to go visit her grandfather. Yeah. I was just like, okay, that's good that you're at least like going to go check on him for her. And then I also thought maybe he didn't say anything and he was like, oh, I'm going to do it in the evening because he's going to FaceTime or something and like her grandfather is going to be there so she can see her grandfather. Mm -hmm. But that's me 
giving the highest benefit of the doubt because he's still trash, so. (laughs) Agreed. Wholeheartedly. Yeah. That's actually all that I have. Do you have anything else? Oh, one last thing. It's about I not being able to, like, read kanji, so... I mean, I'm sorry. Tai Chi's gonna just be on my list. We just have beef. How do you not know your niece doesn't know how to fucking read? You dick. Like, all (laughs) this stuff is happening to this girl. And it's just like, none of y'all are doing the work to check on her to be like, hey, are you learning? Maybe, you know, living with your abuser is too much for you. And so you're not able to learn. You should come live with me. No, no justice justice for i justice for i absolutely my goodness yeah it's like i want to give tai chi leeway but i like slowly and slowly can't and can't anymore like he really could have and should have done so much more for this girl i'm telling you i'd beat his ass i was just like let's <laughs> just like <laughs> like because you just ain't doing shit i mean okay i wouldn't really beat his ass Mm y'all i don't need to be arrested (laughs) but i'm saying you know maybe i would get him arrested for child neglect him and her rude ass terrible ass fucking mother yeah gosh yeah yeah but that's all i had okay Alrighty. Well, guys, we have made it to the end of episode 14 of Shoujo Sunday. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you would like to keep up with us during the week, you can follow us at Shoujo Sunday across all social platforms. You could also write us an email, Podcast at gmail.com. And if you want to follow me personally, I am at Gianna underscore Luna underscore across socials. And where can people find you, Chica? Uh, you guys can find me at Chica. Chica Supreme, that is with a K, not two C's. And that is across all social media. And also, if you guys are listening on Apple Podcasts, please give us a five-star review. Let us know what you're liking or maybe some critiques you have about the podcast. We would love to hear anything you're thinking. Leave us five stars on Spotify. Rate us wherever you can. It really helps people find us. And we really just want to share the love of Shoujo with as many people as possible yeah so we'd super appreciate it if you did that it would help so much it really would help a lot but otherwise i think that's all we've got for you this week so we will see you next week with episode seven through nine of kagaki shoujo we're getting towards the end already we're halfway through well yeah we will see you then Bye. bye